John's right. I often think of the resurrection and what it will mean. Some have asked me, Johnny, how do you imagine that moment? And I know it's not very glamorous. It's not even biblical. <laughs> but I picture myself as a marathoner who has run a long race of suffering. And I see myself breaking the tape, landing on those white sands of the celestial shore, and heaving and gasping as a marathoner would. I drop to my hands and my knees in the sand, gasping, saying, I made it, I made it, thank God, I made it. And then I will roll over on my back, arms splayed in the sand, eyes closed, letting the sun kiss my face. And then sometimes you'll know this when you are lying on the sand and you sense that someone is standing over you, leaning over you, I will open my eyes and there will be the face of Jesus eclipsing the sun. And he'll look down on me and he will say, oh, sweetheart, welcome home. I am so proud of my Holy Spirit inside of you. You stewarded your suffering so well. Well done, good and faithful servant. And now enter the happiness that I have prepared for you. What a day that'll be. Yes. If our happiest moments on earth are foretastes of heaven, then it is our most tragic moments on earth that make us long for it and yearn for it. Heaven is so wonderful. God knows it is so glorious, so filled with pleasure and delight and joy. Isn't it just like God to then turn our hearts toward that distant reality with the help, help of suffering? Samuel Rutherford in the 17th century wrote so beautifully of this help when he said this. He said, if God were to tell me, had he told me, that he was about to make me as happy as I could possibly be on earth, and then that he should begin by crippling me in arm and in limb, what a strange mode I would have thought of accomplishing his purpose. Yet, how is God's wisdom manifest even in this? For if you should enter a dark room and see a man sitting there, shut away, idolizing a set of lamps and rejoicing in their light, and you wanted to make him truly happy, you would begin by blowing out his lamps. And then, opening the shutters to let in the light of heaven. Heaven, it is so wonderful. And yet, when I was on my feet, I never really thought much about it. It was vague and hazy and distant. Who wants to think about heaven? You've got to die in order to get there. But when God sent a broken neck my way, he blew out all the lamps that made my here and now so enticing, so alluring. And he implanted in my heart a desire, a longing for heaven. And so I say to you, as I have said to myself so often, strengthen your feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. I say to you with fearful hearts, be of good courage, be strong, your God will come. He will come and he will rescue you. And then the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the tongues of those who cannot speak will shout for joy, and the lame shall leap like deer. Waters will gush forth over your wilderness. Your burning sands will become a pool. Your thirsty ground will bubble with springs. There will be a highway there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not journey on it, but only the redeemed of the Lord shall walk on it. 
and they and we shall enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown our heads. Gladness and joy will overtake us and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Oh, now, now we are getting to the bottom, to the heart of the matter and why we long and look forward to heaven. Because that moment will mark the end of the ages. The time when the curtain will close on sin and sorrow and suffering and Satan, Christ's kingdom will be completed. His matchless name will be vindicated. The glory of the Lord Jesus Christ will fill the universe as he is crowned King of kings and Lord of lords and all sin and decay will be gone. At this, our faces may grow hot and our hearts will pound, for we shall be glorified. Oh, what brilliant newness. It will sting at first, but then it will feel so familiar, shining in brilliant beauty. No more sorrow, no more disability, no more dementia, no more decay. We will shed these travails as we would a heavy coat falling from our shoulders. And then, we shall understand finally that the Father's plan of redemption was just that, to secure a radiant bride for his glorious son. And we will then see how our suffering prepared us for such a glory. We make too much of this poor world, Charles Spurgeon once wrote. For the trials that now weigh us down will soon vanish like morning dew. We're only here long enough to feel the April shower of pain, and then we are gone, walking among the unfading flowers of endless May. And so, friends, put things in order. A lot to this brief life, it's very brief considerations, and to everlasting glory the weight of eternal joy forever and ever. So picture it with me, you and I, among the multitudes of the redeemed, pulsing with joy, infused with light, surrounded by that angelic host, happily, happily pressing in line with the great procession of the saved, streaming in through gates of pearl, an infinite cavalcade, of the redeemed from earth's wide bounds and ocean's farthest coast, all in one joyous parade, countless generations, all of us, never tiring, never flagging in singing our praises of the Lord Jesus Christ endlessly. Soon, our songs of suffering will be over. Let me repeat, our songs of suffering will be over but we shall sing of Christ's suffering forever and ever and ever. We will never tire of singing how his suffering and affliction and death secured for us such happy delights and pleasures forevermore. And so make yourself ready, would you? Picture that moment with me, standing amazed in the presence of Jesus. Would you sing it with me now even? Preparing ourselves, let's make ourselves ready. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. No wonder how he could serve a, a sinner to death done clean. Let's all stand. Calvary and suffer in 
died of love. And no wonder we sing. Here's the best part, right? And when in France something glory is faced by a black chassis, twill be joy through the ages to sing out his love for me. Sing it out from your heart. It's too glorious not to sing one more time. It's like a psalm, isn't it? It's like a psalm at the end which says, Selah, pause, think of that. One more time, say the amen and sing it. Amen. Hallelujah, friends, and I shall see you on the other side.